low-level laser therapy, or LLLT. What actually is this thing? How does it work? And what exactly is the evidence for it? And most importantly, will it help you get your hair back? Stay tuned to find out. Guys, just before we get into the video on LLLT, if you're watching this video because you're interested in finding a way to regrow your healthy hair, but you don't want to take harsh chemicals that can come with side effects, I want to mention to you the hair guard grow comb. The grow comb uses a hair guard patent pending technology called electrotrichogenesis or ETG. Unlike LLLT, as you'll learn about in this video, the grow comb actually has some amazing before and after photos. And unlike other hair loss treatments, the grow comb is a one-time fee, meaning that you'll own it for life. The hair guard grow comb comes with a 365 day money back guarantee. So to learn more and to see the other reviews of this product, then click the link below. So guys, the first time that we realized there might be a link between lasers and hair growth was in the 1960s. A researcher by the name of Mester was studying lasers as a potential cancer treatment in mice. And as part of his experiments, Mester would shave the backs of his mice. And this was when he actually noticed that the lasers seemed to promote hair growth on the mice. And over the next few decades, we got more and more anecdotal observations of this kind, thus leading many companies to start looking into developing laser devices that would help to stimulate hair growth, which would eventually result in 2007 in the FDA claiming the Hair Max laser comb as a medical device to treat hair loss in men. This was the first LLLT device that had been cleared by the FDA for this purpose. It was actually the first medical device ever cleared for hair loss, period. So what exactly does LLLT mean and how does it work? Well, LLLT stands for Low Level Laser Therapy. So the laser part is self-explanatory. These devices use laser light. Low level literally means that the laser is low powered in contrast to high powered lasers that are used, for example, to surgically cut through tissue. So LLLT devices work with a low intensity laser output to stimulate the follicles into growing more hair. And guys, at this point, we don't really understand how they do this. One possible explanation that you'll find mentioned a lot is that LLLT somehow increases the production of ATP by the cell's mitochondria. The ATP is basically the energy store of your cells, including the follicles. It could be that by stimulating the production of ATP, the cell metabolism is altered and dormant follicles are kickstarted back into their normal hair growth cycle. But all this is just speculation at this point. Nobody actually knows for sure. Now guys, going back to our story of how LLLT came to be. Remember that we were discussing the FDA approval of the first LLLT device in 2007, the original Hairmax comb. Well, this was followed up in 2009 by further FDA clearances on modified Hairmax models. And in 2011, the comb was granted further FDA clearance for the treatment of female pattern hair loss. Over the years, the company has released more versions of its original comb. These newer products have the advantage of larger scalp coverage, but obviously come with the higher price tag. And at this point, there are all sorts of devices on the market apart from the Hair Max line, and they come from a number of different companies. Every year, we seem to be getting more and more LLLT devices. Like, for example, the Theradome, which is a full-sized head cap that is also FDA cleared, as well as the iGrow, another FDA cleared cap. You can also find devices sold for use in beauty salons or in a clinical setting under the supervision of a doctor. The cost of treatment can be as low as a few hundred dollars to purchase a device for home use. The cheapest of these devices start from around $200 and they go all the way up to one or $2,000 for larger devices that cover the entire scalp. Now, if you choose to do the treatments at a clinic, the costs will run higher, all the way to several thousands of dollars spread over several clinical visits. With regards to treatment frequency, most protocols specify something in the order of 15 to 30 minute sessions. These are done every other day for the first few weeks. But afterwards, the frequency typically drops to one or two treatments a week, and eventually you reach the so-called maintenance phase of treatment. Depending on the type of device used, when you're on maintenance, treatments can be as few and far between as once per month. So, what about the published research on LLLT devices? So guys, I want to show you the results of the clinical study that led to the original hair max comb getting the first ever FDA clearance back in 2007. So this was sponsored by Lexington International, the manufacturer of hair max. And it was published a few years later in 2012 in the Journal of Clinical Drug Investigation. 
The study was randomized, double-blind, and included a sham device treatment. In trials of medical devices, the sham device is the equivalent of a placebo. It's basically a fake device that looks like the actual device, but does nothing. It powers up and appears to work just the same, but delivers no treatment. And the sham device used in this trial looked exactly like the hair max comb. But the laser lights were replaced by ordinary incandescent lights, which lacked any therapeutic effect. The subjects were men between the ages of 30 and 60, recently diagnosed with pattern hair loss. At the start of the study, after 26 weeks of treatment, the researchers took hair counts in a one centimeter squared balding area. The men receiving the active laser treatment had an average hair regrowth of 18 hairs, whereas those treated with the sham device continued to lose hair. So in terms of objective hair counts, the device really did produce results. Now the study also reported the subjects own assessments of their hair loss, as well as how the investigating doctor assessed their hair loss. And this is where things get a little bit more tricky. The men who were undergoing the active treatment reported perceiving significantly greater improvement on average compared to the men in the sham treated group. But the expert doctors who blindly compared the before and after photos saw no difference whatsoever between the two groups. I've highlighted this for you in this table. You can see that the percentages of men who the doctors found have had no growth or minimal, moderate and dense regrowth were more or less similar across both groups. These differences were not statistically significant between the two treatment groups. And guys, while hair counts are good and we're all for increasing them, hair loss is a cosmetic condition and something that the expert hair loss doctors are best at assessing. So it appears that while the hair regrowth was statistically significant, it was not enough to be obvious to the naked eye. We've had many other studies on the topic since then. Certainly too many to go over each and every one of them in the limited time that we have today. But guys, I'm going to show you the conclusion of a recent review study that looked at all the available evidence on these devices. The review found five randomized double blinded studies that included the use of sham devices. All five of these studies reported increased hair density after 16 to 26 weeks of LLLT compared to the sham treatment. Reportedly, these differences are comparable to what you get with finasteride or minoxidil. But one problem highlighted by the study is the lack of before and after photos in most of these papers. You see, in most hair loss studies where you get statistically significant treatment effects, there are also some photos of responders' heads before and after the treatment to give the reader a qualitative idea of the treatment effect. But for some reason, these photos are almost non-existent in LLLT papers, and it could be related to the problem that we were discussing earlier, of hair count increasing but not being accompanied by cosmetically significant improvements. Whatever the case, it does seem that those with light skin and short light hair might respond better to LLLT. And anecdotally, dermatologists report that even when no hair regrowth is observed, there is a noticeable improvement in the texture and quality of the hair. Another problem highlighted in the review paper is that the trials typically only last up to six months, meaning that we do not know what happens over a longer time frame, and in particular if the effects of treatment are permanent or if maintenance will be required. We'll come back to this later in the video. There's also the issue of actual frequency that these devices use. The original HairMax device used a frequency of 655 nanometers, which our brain registers as the color red. There are now animal and in vitro studies suggesting that this might not actually be the optimal frequency, but most devices still use the 655 nanometer frequency. And this probably has to do with the fact that it simplifies the FDA approval process if your device has similar specifications to previously approved devices. So manufacturers are still modeling their devices on the original HairMax specifications, meaning that it might be practical and economic considerations rather than the later science that are guiding products innovation. So what are the advantages of LLLT? Well, for starters, it's something that has no side effects. Obviously, you have to be careful to not get light into your eyes, but other than that, there is really nothing to worry about. Due to the way that it works, it also appears to be effective for both male and female pattern hair loss. And some researchers have also tried using it with alopecia areata, another form of hair loss, and the results do appear to be encouraging. And of course, you can do it from the comfort of your own living room if you opt for one of the home devices. It's also cost effective, it's a one-time fee. So you pay upfront for the device, but that's basically it. No more costs after that. These are rather simple machines, so with proper usage and maintenance, you could probably use an LLT device for many years. The obvious disadvantage is that it's a treatment that will require some investment of your time. As I said, a typical session is around 20 minutes. 
and in the beginning at least you require treatment several times a week. But after some months, the frequency of treatments drop and the therapy takes up less of your time. And guys, as with most hair loss therapies, you will probably want to continue treatment indefinitely to maintain your results. This is not absolutely clear in the literature yet. As I said earlier, most published studies don't give any information after the six month mark. But based on the recommendations of most manufacturers and given what we know from the use of light therapy for the treatments of other conditions, it's likely that when you discontinue treatment, the gains that you have made are lost. And guys, since we're on the topics of home treatment devices for hair loss, you can click the link now on the screen to see a video that we recently made about the Groco. Again, it uses the patent pending HairGod ETG technology. I'll see you over there in that video. Thanks.